The Fujifilm X-T5 is without a doubt the best of the Fuji X-T cameras. And in today's video, I'm going to tell you why. I've been shooting with the X-T5 for about a month now, having used it in my studio for headshot and portrait sessions, as well as on location for portraits, candids, and environmental shots. Now that I've spent quite a bit of time with this new camera, I've come to a conclusion that I want to share with you. The X-T5, in my opinion, is the best X-T camera yet. Now, as always, there are some areas where I think the camera can be improved, so we're gonna discuss that too. But let's start with the good stuff because there's a lot. Having used an X-T4 extensively for both still and video work, I'm sure that no one is surprised when I say the autofocus in that camera was the biggest single flaw. Even when shooting a very simple talking head video like this one, the autofocus would pulse in and out, and it would always have me on pins and needles as to whether or not it would consistently lock onto a subject. Even when taking stills, although the AF was much better than for video, there were still quite a few times where the camera would hunt and jump around or just completely miss the focus. Now I'm happy to say that those problems have all but been resolved with the X-T5 and the autofocus is drastically improved over the four. When using the camera in continuous AF with eye tracking enabled, I've had excellent results in my studio with the camera hitting focus basically on every shot. The focus is fast and it's accurate using the Fujifilm 16 to 55 2.8 lens, which is my go-to lens for my portrait work right now. The video AF is also vastly improved over the four. My last video and this one were recorded on the five and the AF has kept locked the entire time without pulsing. I've also used the camera to film B-roll for a theater group that I work with, and the X-T5 has done a great job there as well, although there is still room for improvement in the autofocus, mostly concerning the interface, which I'm gonna discuss a little bit later. When Fuji first announced the 40 megapixel sensor, I was immediately intrigued as I hoped that it would be comparable to the quality that I had become used to with my Canon R5. I did some tests, which I will link below in the description, and I compared both the X-H2 and the X-T5 to the R5 in my studio, and I was really impressed by the results of the Fuji. Now, to be fair, the R5 is still better when it comes to the overall level of detail and the dynamic range, but the X-T5 is now so close that I had to do some extreme pixel peeping to really see any major difference in the quality. So for the work that I do, the new Fuji 40 megapixel cameras are a viable alternative to the much more expensive full frame options. When you combine this greatly improved image quality with Fujifilm's film simulations, it gives the Fuji cameras an edge over the competition. And I think that as more people discover the quality of these new Fuji cameras, you're going to see more people choosing Fuji over the other much more expensive brands. If you look at the X-T5 next to the X-T4, the camera looks just a touch smaller. But in reality, it feels much smaller and it's substantially lighter too. So for those of you who are upgrading from an X-T3, the camera ergonomics will probably be very familiar and welcome. But for me, coming from the X-T4, I first felt that the camera was too small. After a couple of days though, the size and the weight became a benefit over the bulkier X-T4 for a number of reasons. First, the grip side of the camera has been shaved down so it's easier to get your hand around the grip and have a comfortable hold on the camera without the strap connector feeling like it's constantly in your way as it felt with the X-T4. Second, the camera still feels substantial while shaving off a lot of the weight, which is always appreciated when lugging around the camera for a day of shooting. So overall, I'm really happy also with the ergonomics and the four now feels kind of unnecessarily bulky to me in comparison with the five. The buttons and dials are right where you expect them to be. Although the exposure compensation dial is much larger than it was on the X-T4. And I do have some critiques with the dials that I'm going to tell you about in a bit. The best part of the new design, however, is the return of the three-way tilting screen. 
Now, the tilt screen was never a deal breaker for me in the past, so when I picked up the X-T4, I had no real issues with that part of the design. After using the 5, however, I quickly came to realize why so many Fuji fans were very upset when the 4 was announced with the fully articulating screen. Outside of vlogging and creating YouTube content, there is no real world scenario where the flip screen is better than the tilt screen. In fact, I rarely use the flip screen on the 4 when shooting stills because opening it and swinging it out to the side of the camera is a nuisance and having the screen open means that the balance of the camera is now shifted off to your side instead of directly below your eye line. Within one day of using the 5, I was convinced that the tilt screen is a massive improvement and actually improves my workflow and the way that I use the camera. So now I understand why many of you skipped over the 4 and stuck with your X-T2 or 3. I'm sure I'm not alone in saying that the very first thing that attracted me to Fujifilm cameras was their beautiful design aesthetic. Now, having used an X100S, X-Pro1, X-T4, and now the X-T5, the analog dials and the retro-inspired design definitely influenced not just how, but what I shoot as a Fujifilm photographer. There is always an emotional connection, which we sometimes pretend doesn't exist because we want to see ourselves as completely impartial and objective and practical when we talk about tools that we use for our trade. This is for another discussion, but I think we all know that the physical design and the look of a camera influences if we choose to use it. So when I picked up a 5, I decided on the classic silver over the black, and it really is a thing of beauty. I think it's important to remember that classic film SLRs were designed in the way that they were to be functional and to be simple and intuitive. So the dials on the Fuji X-T cameras are time-tested because they work. This means that using the X-T5 is simple, straightforward, and a lot of fun. Aesthetically, I don't think that the X-T5 is necessarily a, an improvement over the 4, but it definitely retains the beauty and the function of Fuji's traditional line of cameras, and I found it to be very practical and fun to use. There's always room, however, for improvement. Okay, so now that I've gushed about the X-T5, let's talk about some of the areas where I feel the camera is still falling short. First, regarding the autofocus, the biggest issue that I personally have at this point is not with the speed or the accuracy of the focus, but with the AF interface. Using the camera in tracking mode with eye detection enabled works well, but the system is not nearly as intuitive as on my Canon system. For example, even when in tracking autofocus mode with face and eye detection enabled, a focusing square remains on the screen. This is distracting and unnecessary, when you, especially when you have just one face in the frame. Now I understand it's there so you can refine where the, section, the selection is, but often it's a distraction and I would prefer if you could disable that if you wanted to. In video mode, the camera has similar interface issues and definitely lacks the versatility of the Canon system, which lets you make changes to the focus very simply by using either the touchscreen or the AF joystick. So the AF system still needs refinement, and I hope that Fujifilm will improve the system through some firmware upgrades soon. Hopefully someone from Fuji is watching this video, but probably not. The smaller size also has some drawbacks, mainly that when using a bulkier lens, the camera loses some of its balance. I find myself sometimes putting my pinky under the bottom plate of the camera to help stabilize it, which means that I might pick up a metal grip attachment soon. The dials, because of the lighter weight, are also less firm when you switch them than they were on the X-T4. And I actually preferred the smaller exposure compensation dial that was set in further on the top plate of the camera because there's less chance of moving it accidentally. Regarding the grip, I do wish they would have made a proper grip for the camera because of the smaller size. And I think it's a shame that Fuji removed the ability to do so completely, although the improved battery life does make it less of an issue. I'm also not a fan of the hard plastic doors that have replaced the rubberized ones on the X-T4 because 
Although they are definitely nicer aesthetically, they're definitely not as practical. The rubberized doors swing out of the way and the chance of them breaking is very small. But these hard plastic doors, which are hinged in plastic against the side of the camera, can easily snap off when tethering or using an external monitor. And I would have preferred the design from the X-T4 on this small issue. As I said right up front, the X-T5 is without a doubt the best of the X-T cameras. After using the camera for more than a month, I've really grown to love it. The design, the build quality, the aesthetics, and most importantly for me, the image quality and the autofocus performance make this camera a huge value for the dollar and one of the best mirrorless cameras on the market today, in my opinion. All of the issues that I experienced with the X-T4 have largely been resolved, and the improvements in the 5 mean that it will appeal now to a much larger audience of shooters. Besides this, Fuji has returned to what made the X-T series great by making the camera smaller and going back to the tilting screen. As a portrait photographer, one of the best parts for me is that I can now use this camera in my studio and create results which are comparable in quality to what I've been used to getting and accustomed to with my Canon R5, with also having the benefit of a much smaller and less expensive system. I'm excited to eventually upgrade to some of the newer lenses too, which are optimized for the new 40 megapixel sensor because I'm sure that that's gonna give me even better results. Well, that is all I have for you folks today. As always, don't forget to gently press that like button. There is no need to smash it. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel and make sure you leave me a comment below. Let me know what you think about the new Fuji X-T5 and any other thing you wanna talk about. I'm always happy to hear from you. Here's wishing you an awesome and great day. Go out and take some amazing pictures today and I will see you next time. Peace.